Greetings Pagelings, this is Emily from Of Pages in Ink, and today I will be doing my book talk on End of Days by Susan E. If you haven't seen my World After video, feel free to go check it out. If you don't want to check it out, that's perfectly fine, because the World After video is pretty much a rant of me trying to decide what I thought about it. But this video is going to be very different because I know exactly how I feel about this book. This book is the final book in the Penrin in the End of Days series, which I recently found out from a friend of mine. I don't know how accurate it is. I trust her, so I think it's true. But if it's not, don't come yell at me because I heard it from somebody. But I heard that Susan E. wanted to make the Penrin in the End of Days series longer, so she had to kind of cram everything into three books, which kind of makes things seem a little fast in this book, but I think it really fits the mood because in End of Days, they're literally pre pre uh, preparing for the End of Days, and so that that um, that looming doom that's like over everybody's head kind of, you, you know, if you knew you were about to die, you would kind of rush and do the things that you wanted to do, wouldn't you? I mean, that's not what they're doing, they're rushing to survive, but you get the idea. Um, I love this book. This is probably the best final book in a series that I've read in a long time. And that's not saying too much because the other series that I have that I haven't finished in a long time, like I've read Lunar Chronicles recently, I've read Throne of Glass recently, I've read The Raven Boys recently, all of those are not done. So I have not yet read the final book to be able to say that it's the best. But from the book series that I have read, this is the greatest sequel ever. Um, like I said, it's really kind of fast paced, but it fits the mood. So you're not like, wow, that went by really fast. It's just kind of, it makes sense. So I don't, I, it's not a big deal in my opinion. Um, I really love how Penryn it, like who Penryn is as a character because she's not you know she's she's I don't want to say she's not like the other girls because it's so cliche but like she's this badass character who admits that she's scared admits that she's worried admits you know things that some other heron heroines would be like I don't know that's not me the only thing that she denies is what girls do deny is that she has feelings for Rafi. And I mean, it's not its not like, I don't like him, it's she kind of pushes him from her mind and lies about thinking about him. That's what I mean by that. But, you know. Um, I like how she goes from trying to protect just her family, her mom and her sister, and mainly just her sister because her mom can kind of protect herself, um, to learning to protect everybody, and I mean like the, the her, her race, her people, from the angels. And there's a reason for that, but I'm not gonna get into too many spoily, spoilery details here. Um, Another character that I've really come to like is her mom. I'm, I don't know how I feel about how she's portrayed as ha being schizophrenic and just kind of overall crazy. Because um, schizophrenic people aren't always like that. Um, so I don't know how I feel about that, but in the, be at, in the beginning her mom just kind of seemed nuts. But as the, as the series progresses, her mom kind of shows that she kind of knows what she's doing, knows what she's talking about, even if it doesn't seem that sane. Um, and sometimes the things that she does actually start to make sense, like the whole rotten egg thing, there's a reason for that. We find out what it is in this book, I believe. And... Um, so, and just in general, like, the mom, her mom, who actually doesn't even have a name, which is kind of, I don't like that she doesn't have a name, it kind of, it, uh, I'm trying to think of how to word it, like, it kind of puts her off from the other characters, because every other character that's important has a name. She doesn't have a name, she's mom, so it's a little weird, but she, 
fights and protects and distracts and she may not be the most sane person but she knows what she's doing and she's become a really helpful and really kind of inspirational character. I, I don't really know if I'd call her inspirational but she you know she is willing to make sacrifices she's willing to risk her life for her family and that's not something that you originally think that's going to happen when you read her actions at, in the beginning in Angel Fall. Um, I love Susan E's writing style a lot. Like uh, anything that really happens that kind of takes me off guard, or like whenever um, Rafi's been out of the picture, or your uh, or Penryn is worried about Rafi or her sister or her mom, or you know, I felt myself really drawn into the story like I was there, or like I was Penryn. And I mean really, like I could picture it like I was watching a movie or I, as if I was actually there. And I love when books do that, because I'm very visual, and sometimes books don't go as well for me if I can't clearly picture it in my brain. Sometimes it doesn't matter, but that's, I'm, that's I digress. Um, so I really love her writing style. Um, I also kind of like how Belial, I think that's how you say it, the demon who uh, has a past that is revealed in this, which is kind of cool. Um, or I think it might have actually been originally revealed in World After, but it's kind of heavily focused on in this one. Um, but he kind of grows on you a little bit. You kind of learn what happened to make Belial Belial and just how kind of horrible he is. And you find out that he wasn't always like that and you kind of get sympathetic for him and it kind of sucks. Um, but so he grows on you and I like I like characters that aren't the nicest that kind of grow on you because if you just flat out hate a character, you're not going to care what happens to them, and sometimes those characters are integral to the plot of the story, and he, he definitely is, so there's that. Um, what I would like to see more from these books, or would have liked to see, or maybe she'll write like novellas or spin-off series or s whatever, um, my friend had pointed out that she wants to know what... Michael had been doing the entire time, and I'm kind of curious as well. Um, she thinks that he was somewhere on Earth having his own journey. I think he was up wherever doing things, and I don't think it'd be all that exciting, but you never know. Um, I would definitely like to see more from um, Layla, the angel doctor, and... Uh, Josiah, the albino angel, which I'm not sure I agree with how he's portrayed because she kind of looks at him like he's an evil freak and that's not really cool. Um, but it doesn't help that he kind of, she feels like he tricked her in Angel Fall, or tricked them in Angel Falls, and that's how Rafi's wings get switched with Belial's. Um, so it doesn't really help, but that, you know, that you shouldn't judge someone like that. Anyway. Um... I really like the human, the really human elements to this story, and I'm going to kind of spoil it a little bit, but it's not too bad, so if you don't want to hear it, mute me until I wave my hand like this. Um, but if you don't care, then keep listening. Um, at, toward the end of the book, when there's like this big showdown, um, they have a talent show to kind of draw the angels to them so they can fight back. And the talent show was just so human. Excuse me. You know they had the they had uh, the San Francisco Ballet, what was left of it, and that was kind of heartbreaking because some of them didn't have partners. They were all kind of dancing by themselves, and then they found one, like one of the dancers that had been missing, and he goes up and he dances with them, and it's kind of like, uh, I didn't cry, but that's kind of what it is. And then this guy goes up and sings um, Hallelujah, I Forgot, who sings it originally, but I know the song Hallelujah. I know it's in Shrek, so if you've seen Shrek, you should know what the song is. 
It's from other things too, but I feel like maybe that's what most people would be like, oh, I know that song. Um, and I actually pulled up my phone to play it at that point in time in the story and listen to it as I was reading, just to kind of give me a, a feeling of the mood, and it's just kind of dark and sad, and the twins are all clowning. It's just, it's so human. And it's just, it, it shows the best in humanity when the apocalypse is around and people are trying to kill each other for food and territory and shelter, and which is kind of territory, but, you know. Um, so I really like how humid it is. Human. Humid? Human it is. Um, just how they kind of become one group and not just like gangs and resistance and civilians, it's just all human and I think it's awesome. I really love that part. Okay, I'm gonna wave. So if you muted me, you can hear me now. Hi! Um, yeah, so that about wraps up my book talk. I will now draw my next book from my little jar here. TBR jar. Not the prettiest CBR jar, but it's mine. Okay. And the winner is... Tiger Lily! By Jody Lynn Anderson. I'm really excited for this book. If you guys don't know what this book is about, it's like a Peter Pan... Kind of re, re... Not really retelling, but it's like... About Tiger Lily from Peter Pan. And her relationship with Peter. I'm really excited to read it. I've heard good things. So look out for that one soon, and I will see you all next time.